You're with HowToAV.TV and Chuck Espinoza of Avixa over at ISE 2018 and we're talking audio system design. Now for many of us, we know all about audio, but there are so many people who, audio is actually the forgotten side of audio visual. There is more to audio than simply public address and background music. Oh, there's tons of different types of audio systems. When you think of anything you hear that's reproduced electronically from large concerts to gas station TV with a little loudspeaker, or now a new popular thing is digital signage. and Designing those audio systems correctly, even for digital signage, can make the hugest difference. Uh, there's the silent audio for our hearing assisted, uh, assisted listening, the induction, the, the induction loops, and knowing how to do a proper induction loop is there's a, a, a science to that, just like doing a proper line array. So there's so many different types of audio systems that we want to uh, make sure that they're all designed properly. There's specifications for everything, there's math for everything, and uh, there's a, you know, a checklist to make sure it's done right that, so people can hear. Uh, we don't want to leave that sense out. That makes a, a good audio-visual system, and I specify audio-visual system. So let, let's talk about, <coughs> we, we have an audio-visual system. It provides voice and it provides background music. Does one size fit all? If I've got a PA system in the building, is that going to work for sound masking as well? Is it going to work for voice evacuation as well? Can I plug everything into the same audio system? Well, it depends on the type of audio system and the content you're running through it. Uh, some general audio systems in a building, uh, distributed audio for PA announcement, they can be used for evacuation if they're designed properly. Um, some audio systems can't. Uh, a lot of background noise uh, or, or sound masking systems are very small speakers and they don't generate a lot of SPL. If you need an evacuation system, you're going to need some SPL to get over any type of background noise. So let's, let's talk about uh, some of the basic needs analysis of an audio system. The environment's one of the biggest uh, keys in designing an audio system. Sound is energy. energy once released from my voice or some other loudspeaker or something, uh, bounces around the room and it reflects or it gets absorbed and that affects how that audio is perceived. If you think about a uh, home system, your 5.1 theater system, we have audio coming from different areas to give us a, a, a feeling that we're in a specific place or a specific time and these things are timed and balanced out for this this one space and time. In a conference room, it's a little bit different. We're not trying to focus on uh, a left to right or a back to front. We want everyone to hear uh, the same exact thing from a UC video conference or um, amplified voices at a large table. So the room has a lot to play with this, how it bounces off, how it gets soaked up, um, how much glass we have in the room as opposed to how much carpet. Uh, and again, the environment and the content. If we're outside and there's no reflectivity, we're gonna need maybe some larger stuff. If we're inside, say with the band, we might need smaller speakers depending on how that energy is contained. So space has uh, everything to do with how our audio is uh, uh, perceived. And I, and I guess just staying with environment for a minute, um, measuring the SPL in a, in a room or in a building when it's empty is very, very different to when people start to arrive in the building. It is very different. If I walked into uh, the convention center last night at midnight and measured the SPL, it would be a lot lower than what the show floor is today. So one of the things we think about when we're designing PA systems, especially something for a, a large convention center or something where it's going to be a, a lot of people, is we have to benchmark and get these noises elsewhere. So we'll go to other convention centers and, and sit and record, take noise measurements throughout the building and uh, look at how large the room is because that affects it. If it's a larger room and it's a lower volume that you know the people in a smaller room might have a higher SPL. So we do a lot of benchmarking and, and kind of figure out what, <clears throat> what they're gonna need for that space in that particular area. And, and then, maybe slightly simplistically, but with, with regards to the hardware within a system, which end of the system do we start with? Do we start with the source or do we start with the output? Uh, I typically like to start with the source. 
um, because if you think of how an audio system is designed and what its function is, uh, I have content. I have something that needs to be amplified. It goes into a microphone, which is kind of like our, our ears. The microphone functions the same way our ear functions. It turns acoustic vibrations into an electrical signal. So that's where it's going to start. It goes down the cables, it goes into the mixer, the DSP, whatever is going to process that audio, maybe into the equalizer or some other processor down the line. And then the last thing would be the amplifier to the loudspeaker. And that's what's going to recreate that, just like our voice would recreate, uh, you know, it vibrates and, and, and makes molecules move. This is going to take that electrical signal, vibrate, make molecules move. So I typically like to start from the front, the ear side, the microphone side and go through my chain. Um, and that allows me to also take a look at specifications mm -hmm. of equipment, which is really important, which a lot of people don't look at. If I had a dynamic microphone that needed, you know, 70 or 80 dB at a certain distance, I wanna make sure my mixer has that 70 or 80 dB in the preamp. And a lot of times, uh, I'll go into places and they're using the dynamic microphone that I know well, and it's it requires you know 60 or 70 dB preamp to get up to zero dBU, the level we want to work at, and the mixer will be a presentation switcher or some type of small switch that has a microphone input that has 40 dB of gain, and that starts to present problems, and uh, trying to make up gain in other places it starts to add noise, it raises your noise floor. So the big key to, to starting off, start with your microphone, your mixer, make sure those specifications uh, marry up well for the levels you're at. And down the line, your mixer is going to have a certain output and it's going to have a certain need for headroom. That, that headroom is not going to cause downstream gear to clip. Now, now within a, a full audio-visual system or a fully integrated system, we, we do talk often about audio being the forgotten side of the technology, and therefore it can often um, really, really struggle with regards to its portion of the budget. When a, a designer is, is talking to the client, how do we make it key that they understand how important an audio system is? If you can't hear me, it's because my voice was underpowered because we didn't have enough money for amplifiers or the right amplifiers or the right microphones. Or I talk very loud and that gets annoying really quick. Audio, we don't think about audio because it's taken for granted a lot with speech. We adjust ourselves comfortably for the environment we're in. If we're closer, we talk softer. If we're further away, we talk louder. Um, giving enough room and budget to our audio system, putting the math together, not just guessing, will enable us to have a trans, what they call transparent audio. I don't want to know it's there, but if I'm 30 feet away, I want to have the same experience as, as one, uh, 10 feet or three feet, one meter, uh, uh, the same experience at 10 meters. I want to have the same uh, comfort of feeling uh, that I'm having a conversation with the person sitting next to me. I don't want it to be too loud. I want it to be just right. I want to feel good about that audio. And the only way to do it is matching it up and by the numbers. And I guess another consideration, certainly with a client, often the client can think that loud is good. We, we've done some work in, in the past with regards to sound field in the classroom. So teacher wearing a microphone so that all children within the classroom can hear everything. And they expect PA so that the teacher is enormously loud. And, and we would have it at low level and the school weren't impressed. I can't hear it, I can't hear it until we switched it off. And then that's when they really heard what was missing when it's taken before. So, so making them understand what the actual levels are and why they're using it is really, really key. It is, it is. The best design is the one you never notice. Very much so. That, I was just gonna ask you for some great tips and, and that's probably gotta be number one. Any other great tips that we'd really need to consider when we're looking at an audio system chart? When you're looking at audio system design, specifications and math. There is math for just about every process along the way. There is math to predict your audio system. 
Uh, there is math to plug in before you buy one piece of gear to figure out if it's going to work or not. Please do the math. There is no magic in audio. I know you can plug it in and turn it on and it sounds. But if you want to plug it in and turn it on and have it sound good or have it not be noticeable, there's math for all of that stuff. How to AV has got plenty more training and information on audio system design. We're going to get as much out of Chuck as we possibly can. Join us again soon at howtoav.tv.